You've seen it plenty of times on our air at this time of year. Bears in people's backyards, spring after all. But how about two of them? King 5's Glenn Farley with the story. It's spring, the snow is melting out in the mountains in the high country, and it's time for the bears to wake up. We see these scenes every year, but look at this one. This is in Redmond. This property backs up to a green belt. And the property owner here had not one bear, but two bears who kind of warn each other off saying, this is my spot. And it was actually pretty scary because we were watching from the window uh, and they are probably eight, 10 feet away. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, to see them uh, this close and see their claws and jaws, it, they're pretty scary, actually. I talked to the Department of Fish and Wildlife's expert on bears. He says what's happening today is not unusual, but he says there are things you can do, whether you're out on the trail or just as a homeowner, to sort of keep people and bears separated. More on that tonight at 5. Near Index, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. That's it for King 5 News at 4 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Craig, good to see you. Uh, we have much more ahead. Of course, another hour. King 5 News at 5 starts right now. The sonic boom heard around the sound, the out of this world origin of what a lot of people witnessed last night. I'm Drew Mickelson. Churches are trying to figure out how to hold drive-in services while obeying the new social distancing rules. The return of football and the Seahawks. The NFL schedule revealed. And the hunt for giant hornets checking traps for the so-called murder hornet. Good news and some bad news for the state's unemployment security department. Last week, 100,762 new claims were made for unemployment benefits. That's about 27% less than the week before. Since the influx of job losses in early March, $2.14 billion in unemployment has been paid to people across the state of Washington. The frustration continues for a lot of people trying to get benefits. We get the latest on this from King 5's Chris Daniels. Chris White was working for a video game company. And what happened uh, when the governor issued his stay home order? Uh, we were all sent packing to uh, work from home and two days later I was let go from the company. He's since spent hours trying to play a real life game navigating the state's unemployment filing system. I spent so many hours, at least 40 hours, just on hold trying to get through to people. Thousands of phone calls with ESD just being disconnected, getting through to people who weren't able or willing to help. It honestly felt more like the latter. He's not alone in those feelings. Today, we heard from several people stuck in an adjudication or eligibility process. Erica from Arlington wrote, I've been waiting six weeks to hear back. I've sent multiple messages with no response, said Sherelle from Tacoma. Michelle from Seattle is so confused and beyond frustrated. Not hearing anything from ESD is what made me slash us the most frustrated, added Heather. They are among the 57,000 people the state now acknowledges have been tied up in the process and have not received benefits for weeks. We hope to at least get some really substantial momentum through our backlog within just the next two weeks. And then our goal is to get to 100% by mid-June, but hopefully a lot more before then. Employment Security Director Susie Levine. I'm hoping that it's sooner and faster, but I also need to make sure that I set people's expectations appropriately. There was a adjudication process and I, it should have been adjudicated on April 6th. That's exactly what I was told word for word today. But nobody had looked at my claim. No one had picked it up. No one was assigned to it. White says he's been told the check is in the mail that he now so desperately needs. And how have you been getting by? Uh, barely. I've exhausted every single last cent of my savings. I have nothing left. And now I have to wait an extra two to four days, and that's if everything goes well for the payment to process. In Seattle, Chris Daniels, King 5 News. 
So tomorrow morning, we're going to wake up to new national unemployment numbers. The April report's expected to show at least 16% of all Americans are now out of work. Those figures will not include an additional 3 million Americans who filed for unemployment in just the last week. We are in for a warm Mother's Day weekend. Here's a live look at the Seattle waterfront tonight. It's going to feel like summer. A lot of people will want to get out and enjoy some fresh air, but the city of Seattle says it is still too soon to gather for picnics in parks. Kick 5's Ted Land joins us live from Capitol Hill tonight with more on how the city plans to enforce this. Ted, good evening. Hi guys, this is what it looks like at Cal Anderson Park this evening, and don't expect to see a scene like this this weekend. They will not be allowing this many people to be sitting out enjoying this nice weather that's heading our way. This will be the most tempting weekend yet because of the stay at home order uh, is still in place and it's Mother's Day weekend. But the city of Seattle is not lifting restrictions on gatherings in parks and they're strongly discouraging people from gathering in groups or organizing a barbecue outdoors with lots of family and friends. They say it's just too soon to be doing that. Seattle parks are still open for walking, running, biking and exercise. But like they've been saying for weeks, you got to keep it moving. No sitting around all day. Parking remains closed at the larger parks like Discovery, Volunteer, Gasworks, Seward and others. And there will be about 60 parks ambassadors in enforcing these rules. Mayor Durkin says if they have to, ambassadors will call police to report violators, but that's a last resort. But we're really counting on people to do the right thing, to keep moving, to not have groups and gatherings, um, to not use still any of these parks like Golden Gardens, like are the traditional uh, spring and summer party places. They can't be right now. I checked with Everett Parks, and while they have reopened parking at their parks, they too are discouraging picnics and gatherings. Same for down in Tacoma. Uh, no gatherings there allowed. And remember, Washington State Parks have reopened, so the state will be keeping a close eye on those parks this weekend to make sure everybody's still keeping a safe distance. Live in Seattle, Ted Land, King 5 News. Ted, thank you. Coming up at 530, the slow process of getting back to business. Eric Wilkinson is in Arlington tonight asking why casinos are being allowed to reopen now. And Drew Mickelson is in Grace Harbor County as churches get ready for a new kind of Sunday service. Those stories coming up in less than 30 minutes. We have an update now to a story that King 5 reported yesterday. Walla Walla County health officials have walked back their claim about coronavirus parties. The Walla Walla County Board of Commissioners released a statement which reads, quote, one of these gatherings had been reported initially as a coronavirus party, then later identified as a social gathering. They add they're reviewing the facts around the incident. Okay. New tonight at 5 o'clock as we take a live look at CenturyLink Field, we now know details of the Seahawks schedule for the upcoming season. The NFL released the schedules in the past hour. Paul Silby joins us now from his home studio with details on who the Hawks will play and when. Paul. Every football fan waits for this day, probably more this year than in years past. Now we've always known who the Seahawks are playing. Now we know when and it gets exciting as you start to look at this schedule. The Seahawks open September 13th on the road at Atlanta. Then they're back home for two straights. They host the Patriots on Sunday night football, followed by the Cowboys. The Hawks open the month of October at Miami, possibly against rookie quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Then they're back home for a Sunday night matchup against the Vikings, followed by a bye week in week six. The Hawks rack up, wrap up October at Arizona. Now the Seahawks open November at home against the NFC champion 49ers. Then it's on the road for two straights at Buffalo and at Los Angeles against the Rams. November 19th is a Thursday night game at home against the Cardinals. And the Hawks close out the month at Philadelphia National TV Monday Night Football. The Hawks start out December hosting the Giants and the Jets. Then it's off to D.C. before returning home to square off with the Rams. The final game of the regular season could be huge. January 3rd on the road against the 49ers. Much more about the schedule, plus we'll hear from John Clayton coming up at 545. Live from the deck, I'm Paul Silvey, King 5 Sports.
All right, thank you, Paul. You will hear a rumble in the sky tomorrow. A special flyover is planned across western Washington. The 62nd Airlift Wing is planning to fly over 30 health facilities to say thank you to those on the front lines of the pandemic. The planes will take off from Joint Base Lewis McCord around 1230 in the afternoon. Here's a look at the flight path, which is expected to take about two hours to complete. That should be fun. Well, speaking of noise, it was the boom heard around the sound. Social media lit up last night after a lot of you reported a loud noise that didn't sound like it came from Earth. King 5 Sebastian Robertson has more on the mystery that has now been identified and the person with the picture and audio to prove it. it seems like the world just can't get any crazier. I know, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic and now we have rocks coming and falling on us and creating booms. <laughs> Nothing to quell our collective anxieties like space debris. <laughs> Creating a sonic boom so loud that it wakes up Twitter. Where this was like a really low, like boom. Jenny Morber says she heard the sound from Bainbridge Island. Toby Logston from his home in Linwood. Okay, it sounded like a gas line exploded or something like that. Don't believe them? We'll take a look at this video from Scott Story, captured from a camera on his porch in Briar. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the street go by. Um, the audio is actually uh, three minutes later, the boom. Turns out the American Meteor Society, a national nonprofit, tracks these events. A spokesperson says this was likely a random event unrelated to a meteor shower that's currently lighting up the sky around the world. Well, I figured it was around 200,000 feet if it's three minutes, but... I'm no expert. As for altitude, experts at AMS say it was likely some 30 miles in the sky, on the upper cusp of the stratosphere, well out of range of commercial air traffic, but close enough to be seen and heard. That sound right there, a sonic boom, as the debris hits a speed of more than 760 miles per hour. I went on to my um, home security cameras and, and just watched it for a few minutes, and sure enough, it was plain as day. According to experts, hearing a meteor is extremely rare. Roughly one in 400 sightings include a report of sound. Catching it on video, well, that's a whole different story. Despite many reports of the boom on social media, the American Meteor Society says it only received 12 reports to its website, adding that's not enough to accurately gauge the trajectory. In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News. Demanding answers, federal lawmakers question Amazon's policies toward whistleblower employees. And frustration applying for unemployment. We answer your questions next in Your Money, Your Future.